Hello, everyone, and welcome to our first event in our Identity and Inclusion series focused on first-generation college graduates, low-income individuals. My name is Donna Levinson, and I have the privilege of being the Assistant Dean for Admissions. And I want to welcome all of you from all over the world who are joining us this evening here in Boston, Cambridge. But I know for some of you, it's in the middle of the night. It could be early morning, um, afternoon. And so welcome to one and all. I want to begin by first reading a land acknowledgement statement. MIT acknowledges, Catherine, if you could turn the page. Oops, thanks. So MIT acknowledges indigenous peoples as the traditional stewards of the land and the enduring relationship that exists between them and their traditional territories. The land on which we sit is the traditional unceded territory of the Wampanoag Nation. We acknowledge the painful history of genocide and forced occupation of their territory, and we honor and respect the many diverse indigenous people connected from time immemorial to this land on which we now gather. So I also want to mention right up front that MIT Sloan is in fact a mission-driven school. And all of you can clearly read in front of you what our mission is. To me, it's truly about identifying and solving the world's biggest and most complex problems in order to make the world a better place. And it's it fits in so well because it's not just the mission of MIT Sloan, but it's actually the mission of the greater MIT as well. In order to support this mission, we at the Sloan School have what we call a portfolio of programs. And I just briefly want to talk to you about those. So we have, and, and it really runs the spectrum of, of individuals. So today we're very much focused. We have a panel here of students from our MBA program and our LGO program, LGO Leaders for Global Operations, where you actually receive two degrees in two years, an engineering degree as well as an MBA. But we also have programs and offerings for individuals at other ends of the experience spectrum. So at the earliest, we have our master's in business analytics and our master of finance, very much targeted at early stage professionals. And on the other end of the spectrum, we have our executive degree programs, our Sloan Fellows, um, which our students have on average 14 years of experience, and our um, executive MBAs where our students have on average 17 years of experience. Um, and the reason why I'm telling you this, oh, first off, so let me just mention, and this is not a program at all, but we have an MBA early offering. So for those of you who may currently be college seniors or grad students who haven't yet worked, you can actually apply to the MBA program, be accepted, go and work for two to five years, and we will hold a seat for you. And what the main reason why I'm telling you this is because part of our construct for any one of our programs is that you're taking a core set of classes and then you're taking a series of electives. And once you start taking electives, there is a very good chance that you could be in classes with many other people from other programs. This is by design. This is because the thinking is that in order to truly tackle the world's most complex problems, you need to bring together people with different experiences, people with different backgrounds, people with different expertise to come together and to solve these problems. And we're, I'll say, simulating that environment a bit at MIT Sloan. Today, we are extremely fortunate to have with us Shiv Bhakta, who is an LGO, Leaders for Global Operations, graduating next year, um, who is going to moderate our panel. I have to tell you a secret, Catherine, if you could just flip the slide. Um, when I heard that Shiv was actually going to be a part of this panel, I got a little excited. Every time I hear him speak, and I've heard him speak quite a bit lately, um, I learned something new. And I think that is sort of part of just what the MIT Sloan ecosystem and community is all about. He is honest, he is exciting, he is sincere, he is creative, he's incredibly inspiring. And he's thinking, oh my God, am I gonna be able to live up to this? But I have no doubt. And so what I would love to do right now is introduce Shiv to you, who will talk about our Fly Club, and we'll introduce the panel. And then I'll be back later on at the end for um, a few logistics. Shiv, it's all yours. Awesome, thank you, Donna. Thank you, Donna. And thanks for all those kind words. 
I agree. I don't know if I'll be able to live up to that. <laughs> um, but let me start by jumping into the uh, into what the Flight Club is. Thanks everyone for joining. I know y'all are all calling from all over the world, different time zones, different I mean, there's different things going on in your lives. So making the time to, to be here today is very meaningful to us for all the panelists as well. In terms of what the Flight Club is, if you can go to the next slide, please. Uh, so at Sloan, we have a lot of, uh, we have various uh, affinity clubs. And I am one of the co-presidents for this year's FLI club or first gen or low income club. And it's intended to be a community of graduate students at Sloan that identify as first generation college students or coming from low income backgrounds. And the idea is that we face different hurdles because of those socioeconomic factors that uh, didn't enable us to get various experiences in our, uh, in our life up until school or even during school that changes the way that we interact with our MBA experience. Uh, it's been super powerful for me personally, which is why I decided to, to spend the time to become co-president of it. And I think it's a really strong community. Some of the panelists uh, were even uh, members themselves and they were, uh, I, I interacted with them through that experience as well. To quickly go through the slide, there are various ways to, to look at what FLI means. And it could be the first person in the family to earn a bachelor's degree. My mom and dad really didn't go to high school, so I'm the first one to do that. But there's other ways to, to factor in FLI as well, whether or not you were a Pell Grant recipient for those from the US, uh, for those that had minimal contact with their, uh, had minimal contact in their childhood with college graduates. If you didn't know any PhDs or masters or bachelors, that's a big hurdle to jump over. As well as if you're an ally or a student who identifies with a first gen experience in any way. Uh, I think importantly, the, the fact that Sloan has a club like this is super powerful. And hopefully we can dive into how that uh, manifests throughout the experience. Cool. So I think next we can jump straight into this panel. <laughs> awesome. So we're, we're joined by a rock star group of Sloanies, either alumni or current Sloanies. Uh, the easiest way to go through this would be to go uh, person by person, maybe from left to right on the screen, and maybe quickly tell us your name, the program, uh, the year that you were at Sloan, and then what you're doing now if you've already graduated. Allegra? Sure. Hello, everyone. Glad to be back in the midst of Sloanies in a, sl a panel of Sloanie women and Shiv. <laughs> nice to meet you, Shiv. Um, I'm Allegra <laughs> Stennett. I'm a 22 MBA. Um, background is in finance and currently um, working at New Majority Capital. We are a impact investing fund. I'll jump in here. So hi everyone, nice to meet everyone. My name is Vanessa Labrador. I also was an MBA 2022. I have a background in finance and economic consulting and now I'm a supply manager for Meta. Hi everybody, I'm Jordan Dominguez. Um, I was also an MBA 2022. It's nice to be reunited with some of my classmates here. Um, my background before business school was in technology. I was a product manager. Um, I used my time in business school to kind of apply that in a different realm. Um, I'm working for the federal government now. I'm a product manager at U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services, working on the refugee and asylum program. Um, awesome. And hi, everyone. I'm Amber Gonzalez Vargas, uh, born and raised in California, where I'm currently at right now. Um, my parents are immigrants from Peru, and I actually just graduated from Sloan in May, June, June, so a couple months ago. <laughs> so fresh out of the grad system, but as my profile says here, um, I am a dual degree student getting my MPA at the Harvard Kennedy School, so I do have one more year in the Cambridge area. Um, and prior to graduate school, I worked in the philanthropic sector at a statewide foundation in California, uh, where I managed a donor network. And this summer, I'm a summer MBA associate at a VC fund called Vamos Ventures in Los Angeles. Amazing. I love to see the background of experiences and also where everyone ended up from, from federal government to, to big tech to VC. It's cool to see how tangential different people's career paths go. After Sloan. Uh, awesome, Joel. Thanks for thanks for thanks for the introductions. Let's start with maybe uh, a question for for anyone who's willing to jump in here on why you chose Sloan. Like, what what attracted you to the community? What attracted you to the program? 
I can start actually because it's funny. Like I think the year that I applied, Fly had just started as an organization at Sloan, and the ladies on this panel can definitely like confirm that. And I see them them shaking their heads. So I was actually in your seats as an audience um, around the, around this time when I was applying back in 2021. And I'm pretty sure, Vanessa, you were on the panel, I, I think. But I, I just remember, um, for me, it was actually really unique to, to be in a space where there was other fly students. And that for me was a huge draw. Like while I was involved in different organizations um, on campus while I was at Sloan, Fly was definitely my first touch point, and this what the webinar that was held by um, the Fly team was honestly my first exposure to it. And and hearing other students who had gone through it was really important for me because I didn't have anyone even in my friend group who had really gone to an MBA program. And so the process for me was really uh, was very much a, it was a really big stretch and growth space for me. I, I hadn't been a part of any of the other programs that some of you may already be in or want to apply in like Toygo or Forte, MLT, Consortium, all those names are very new to me when I started the application process. And so kind of hearing from students with similar backgrounds like mine who maybe hadn't had that network going into the application process was one encouraging, but also really um, kind of reaffirming that it was something that I that I could do. And so that was, I would say Fly was actually a big reason. The Fly group um, at Sloan was a really big reason why I applied. Applied And um, choosing Sloan for me, I think one of the things that we always say, Sloan is helping Sloanies. And I think this community has really been uh, a big part of that in terms of just having an awesome support system of current students that I'm sure others will also touch on as well. Yeah, I also actually Amber, went, went to a panel and kind of that was what made me want to be part of the Sloan community. And it's funny, I have almost the same memory as you, even though I was at a different panel of people talking about Sloanies helping Sloanies and just feeling this sense of like warmth and genuineness coming from the people on the panel and really feeling like I got a picture of a more inclusive group um, than maybe I imagined at business school. And so um, that was really meaningful for me. And especially coming to an MIT panel, I thought, well, it's going to be a bunch of like techie people. And I was from tech, so that was fine. But um, I knew I wanted to kind of get in touch with more of the like people side of things. And so that really opened my eyes to the community that we have here. Yeah, I'll hop in and say um, my experience is a little bit different. So I did MLT and as part of MLT, we got what's called a school uh, resource workbook. And we had to add schools in that we like our dream schools and our fit schools. And it had like a model of how much the school is aligned with what you wanted to do. And I actually attended a Sloan on the road event in New York. I'm from New York. And um, at that event, that was the first school that I ever interacted with was a Sloan on the road event. And I met a lot of Sloanies there and they told me about all these opportunities that I had no idea existed. Um, I didn't even know MIT had an MBA program prior to this event. And that's because like I worked in banking. So a lot of the front office people that, that had MBAs, they didn't come from Sloan. But then after discovery, I realized a lot of the people working on like the super big tech projects for the bank did go to Sloan. Um, and so I filled in that workbook and had specific criteria. Like I wanted a school in the Northeast that had a strong entrepreneurship ecosystem that had a good brand name. So those are some of the things for me. And uh, Sloan met that criteria. And Meeting Sloanies, Sloanies helping Sloanies is such a real thing. I had Sloanies open up their home to me when I visited that helped me with my application in very like in strong detail. So like one of my Sloany friends now, she helped me with my application during her pre-function trip, which is a trip you typically take before you start the MBA. So just seeing that dedication of her taking out time that she's supposed to be having fun with her friends in her MBA program to help me on my application, that was just very, um, that was a good analogy of this, how the Sloney Helping Sloney's community is very strong. Yeah, and I mean, obviously we have already so many examples of really good community. But just to throw another one in there, um, when I applied to Sloan and got in, uh, one of my first concerns was, how can I pay for this? And, and how can I afford this? Um, 
that was part of the concern. And then the next concern was obviously, and how am I going to explain to my parents that I'm going to pay for this? Um, so I wrote an email to um, who, who then was in Donna's shoes, um, Rob, wrote him an email uh, where I was just really honest. And I was like, hey, I'm not asking for money. You know, like I understand it's really late in the process. This is not what this email is. Um, but I need, I need help, like finding resources and figuring out what my options are at this point late in the game in terms of getting some funding, some scholarships. And um, he responded immediately um, and called me afterward and put me in contact with a student. And that student helped me figure out um, a lot of scholarships, a lot of you know loan processing and things. They really went the extra mile. And this was just a Sloney who was at Sloan, had classes, had an internship. And it really made me realize that Sloan will meet you where you are, but also they will give you the resources and they will connect you with people who really are happy to help you. And so long story short, I was able to get a scholarship um, via you know all of these helping hands. And so just really made the difference for me um, and resonated with me in terms of Sloanies helping Sloanies. Like, you know, really like they, they will go the extra mile for you. That's amazing to hear. I think that's part of the the challenge of the FLI experience so that you don't have the network to, to know what opportunities are out there. So the fact that we're some of the current students are able to help you during your application is really nice. Um, okay, so I have questions, but you guys have made some really interesting comments. So I'm going to veer my questions to, to double down on some of the things that you guys said. For example, you mentioned how uh, breaking this to the family was a really hard, uh, really complex situation because it's a, it's a financial investment. Uh, especially coming from FLI background. So I guess like for those that had uh, challenges for, in that regard, how did you think about the application process or even considering jumping into a full-time MBA program? And then did you feel like for those that have graduated that it's all, it was all worth it? Yeah, so I can jump here. Um, I actually had this conversation with someone who had started up FLY um, the year that I was applying. So um, they kind of said to me, you know, the approach that I used was I took the MIT jobs report and showed it to my family and was like, look at the earning potential from this, the, the return on investment. Um, and so if that resonates with your family, if that's something that resonates with you, by all means. Um, for me, it was more so I want to have an impact. I want to be in a leadership position. I want to be able to give back. To the community that I came from. And I think that this, this degree, but more than that, this network, this education, these professors are really going to make the difference. And so sitting down with my parents um, and with my family, with my siblings, you know, no, no one has a, a graduate, like no one has a, a bachelor's degree, much less a master's degree. So explaining to them that I needed, I needed more um, to get where I was going and having them put their faith in me. I mean, I'm really lucky that I have a very supportive family and they were like, whatever it takes, you know, um, they, they were all about it. But I, I think it is a hard conversation. And I don't think if your parents or your family or your spouse, you know, whoever it may be, is questioning the decision, I think, at least in my part, you know, it didn't come from a bad place. It just came from a place of concern, you know, like, well, we haven't seen this before. It's the unknown. Um, but I think, you know, just doubling down and, and really thinking about this isn't a, a spur of the moment, but it's more of a strategic decision that I'm making and, and here are the reasons why. Amazing. Yeah, that, that job report blew my mind. I'm going to be right <laughs> frank. I remember when I first I came from ExxonMobil and then the DOE. And uh, just like knowing how much people were made post MBA, regardless of like, like the program, it's it's a whole different world, I think. And I think this is part of how our careers have, I guess, developed. So I guess maybe double clicking on that piece. Uh, when you were applying, your understanding of the world, especially given the like the limited experiences we have is, uh, with uh, postgraduate, like MBA, like other MBA uh, grads or other grad school grads in general, uh, how did that career progression change? Did your goals change entirely when you after you came to school, 
did you completely find new things that you fell in love with? How was that? I can start. Um, so I applied to Sloan at the time I was um, a, a banker in investment grade healthcare. And my goal was to create a digital healthcare company. So that's in my cover letter. Um, so I wanted to do entrepreneurship. And I've obviously since veered, still on the entrepreneurship path, which is a different sector. Um, and that's the value of the MBA, right? You come to Sloan and you hear about things like, I didn't even know that search funds, entrepreneurship through acquisition, existed until my last semester of business school. And so I think that I'm very much a case in the career switching aspect. Um, but that for me was, I came into Sloan with an open mind. So all I knew was that I didn't want to go back to finance, but I knew um, I would be open to whatever opportunities came up. And so I think that's one of the best ways to approach the MBA. Um, if you know for sure you want to do something and like, the path is there for you to do it, then by all means, go down that path. But definitely still have an open mind as to what are the opportunities that com might come up. You, have, you might meet a professor who used to work at XYZ company, and then in their class, you discover that, hey, I really like this. I'm going to pursue an internship in this. The internship turns into a full-time job. And then your second year, you might say, hey, actually, I decided I want to do something completely different because I went on a G Lab trip. And that trip you know, fuel this new passion. So I think being open is fine. And I think the application allows you to be open. Sloan knows that the majority of people career switch and change from what they say they want to do in their cover letter. Um, so I think having an open mind will be beneficial. Yeah, I also came in with kind of one picture of what I wanted to do and sort of changed my mind a bit. Um, I think for me, one thing I think about a lot is that uh, like when I graduated from college, I my first job paid me like more money than I ever thought I would make. Like I was like, I've made it. This is great. And I had that job and like things were good. Right. And I think for me, my own yardstick of what a good job was, was, you know, measured against what I saw my parents go through. And so I was very much like this is, you know, the best of the best. And I felt sort of unfulfilled. And I also felt like I had absolutely no right to feel that way. Um, and I chose the MBA program because I knew that I wanted to do something else, but I wasn't sure what. And so my application was, you know, I'm going to stay in tech. I'm going to be some big VP. I'm going to keep doing product management. Um, and it was being in school that kind of gave me that space to think about, well, what would taking some of the things that I like about tech look like if I moved into a different space and one where I felt like I was making more impact? And I think what's been really big about being part of Sloan for me has been having that network of other professional people kind of coming from a wide variety of industries who can give me a lot of that like career advice and connections, whether they're in the same industry as me or whether they're in a totally different industry. But I feel like I have a real network that helps me kind of navigate the professional world in a way that I didn't before. And that's really made a big difference in kind of how I show up and, and what opportunities I see for myself. Yeah, so it sounds like a big value of this, uh, of the Sloan experience is that you're able to connect with people that come from entirely different parts of the world, different backgrounds in terms of experience. So I guess, on one hand, that's exciting and that's really cool that you get to meet like uh, engineers from Brazil or like bankers from like Thailand. But at the same time, that's kind of like scary because like what, like uh, maybe you don't have, like you have a specific type of experience that you're bringing to the table, right? Uh, and how do you fit into this overall cohort experience and how do you add value into the classroom? So I guess like, and you entered Sloan, how did you get that sense of community to help you feel grounded, help you feel connected to uh, the program and get the most value out of it? Yeah, I can jump in here. So for me, honestly, not because we're on a fly panel, but honestly, it was fly. Um, it it was a little jarring, I'll be honest, to sit in a classroom. You have sometimes the imposter syndrome. Um, you're you're kind of asking yourself, why am I even here? What am I doing here? Was this a mistake? Uh, and then sometimes topics come up in class, you know, um, because it, we are so diversified, you know, sometimes people will talk about investments and things. And there were things that I was just not familiar with that, you know, my parents have not been investing. So I, I just wasn't familiar with these topics. And it seems like people sometimes might have 
a little bit of an upper hand um, just based off of where you're starting. So for me, it was really important to find a community. And I did find that within Fly. Um, I remember the first session that I had with Fly was um, they did like a community sharing session. So basically you told, you mapped out your life in like a diagram and you shared it with everyone. And I remember it was it was the first time that I had actually shared with people about, you know, growing up with food insecurity and, and saying that out loud in like a professional setting. Um, and it was it was a really growing experience um, to be so open with people. And I, I think I would have never expected that from an MBA program. Um, and that people reciprocated and constantly did so. And, and we could, you know, talk about the feelings of, you know, imposter syndrome or whatever it may be, where we were starting at. So I, I thought the fly community was, was really it for me. Yeah, I think for me, similarly, like, um, kind of building, up, incorporating that into my experience. Um, I think it was partially fly, but also seeing fly folks in other spaces, which really helped me build out my community. Um, for example, like, I mean, I was on the panel here, like she was such a huge, like, I keep calling, she was like my, my mentor guide in like a lot of different spaces. Senate in particular, I think was a really big one for me, um, both in just like deciding to run as a Senator and eventually just, you know, being involved in that space, it was so critical for me to like, it was helpful to have these folks within other spaces as I got involved in community because the community is so big and there's so many different interests that you'll have. And I think, you know, um, we talk about FOMO and JOMO, both the fear of missing out and the joy of missing out, but there's so many different things that you could be doing, especially if you're hoping to transition either careers or you're hoping to just get exposed to different um, different ideas, spaces, people, networks, and all of that. And I think, um, yes, it's awesome, but it's also good to have like anchors within those space. And that's, that's for me was helpful in finding community in new spaces um, because everything was for, you know, for me coming from the philanthropic sector, working with nonprofits, uh, also just honestly, like living my entire life in California and being on the East coast for the first time, like all of that for me was like really new. And so just having anchors of people that I felt like I could trust um, was helpful as I navigated the, the MBA experience. Yeah, um, <clears throat> excuse me, I agree with all of that. Definitely the affinity clubs, leadership positions allowed you to um, engage with folks and build community. But something I'll say for those on the call who may not be extroverts or may not like to network. Um, I think my first semester I was, so I started during COVID um, and I definitely used the excuse that I was taking classes at home to not go out and meet people. I was just like, I didn't feel like doing it until my second semester was when I actually met a lot of people and they were like, oh, you're in our class. And I'm like, yeah, sorry, I haven't been here. But to give an example of how that was done well, one of our classmates, uh, Claudia Moreno, who was also on Senate with us, she started her sem first semester in California. And what she did was she had virtual coffee with everyone in her section. So that's about 60 people. That So now she had a selection of people to build community around because she couldn't do that in person. So there are ways for those of you who, on the, who are on the call and who might not want to might not know how to network or build community. There are definitely strategies you can put into place um, to do so. Yeah, my answer is a lot like everyone else's. Um, I'll shout out HBC, the Hispanic Business Club is kind of the first place that felt like home for me. Um, and I think I found that once I had people who felt like home, I also felt like I could reach out to other people who maybe I felt different from. Um, because I knew that I had like that community to go back to. And so it was interesting because I found, you know, my group, my people, and I felt, you know, like, this is all I need. I have my community, but then I actually felt myself opening up to new experiences in a different way. Um, so that was a really, a really nice side effect. I love that. And I'm glad to hear the overlap between all the, all the anecdotes. Uh, I remember back when I started, one of the speakers on like the admit weekend were saying that like the, the MBA experience has like the, uh, like there's different zones that you can be in. You could be in like the comfort zone, you can be in like the stretch zone, or you can be in the danger zone. 
and the comfort zone, you're not pushing yourself, you're not learning as much and in the danger zone, you're scared, so you're not getting the most out of it. And the cool thing about this community is that you're able to like, it can pull you back into the comfort. So then you're able to take those bigger leaps and take those bigger risks and talk to new people, take new experiences. And I'm glad to hear that that's manifesting in a lot of different ways. Um, but we all mentioned the FLI club as a really cool unifier. So I guess let's double down on that and say like, how did you, how did you integrate into that community? Were there like events that you went to? Were there trips maybe to Providence that were interesting or were there, <laughs> how did you best uh, collaborate with the FLI club? I mean, I'll just bounce off what you said. I, I, I mean, it was the retreats for me, which were really fun. Like, again, realistically, folks, like, you know, we're, we're mentioning fly here because I think it's also front and center for us, but there's so many events all the time. And so you really have to be selective about like where you're going to go. And for me, like I went to the, the fly retreat my first semester of my first year and I was like, oh, this is it. So that was one that I prioritized every time it came around. Um, for example, um, I was also going on multiple other different kinds of like weekend trips, cl different clubs, different, my core team, my like different, different things like that. Um, but specific to fly, like, I think that the retreat was one that I personally prioritized because I got a lot of value out of, out of it. Yeah, I agree. Can you repeat the question though, Shiv? I might've missed part of it. Yeah, no, it was how did you integrate into the fly club? Were there like meetings or were there events or how did you build that community? Yeah, like Amber, um, the fly retreat that I went to my second year, and I believe Vanessa was our one of the co-presidents of the club my um, second year. And so she was integral in planning the trip. Um, I was also part of the leadership team. And so the fly retreat definitely was um, a nice grounding experience, a nice community building experience. But then also I remember we had like some sort of listening session as well my second year. And I just remember the person that was sitting next to me by the end of the session was in tears. And I think that was like a very powerful moment of just sharing our stories, thinking about all the people that helped us get to Sloan um and what we were going to do after we were talking about some of the experiences some of the things that we go through as fly students that other people might not have to worry about things like you know perhaps you're at MIT but you're sending money home and it's like how are you sending money home when you're not working a full-time job it's like all these different things um and so I think those sorts of experiences were definitely powerful in addition to seeing fly students at MIT do super well so for example Jordan won um one of the awards are um I believe it was our first year or second year. I can't remember. But so just seeing fly um, students, fly members do well um, was also inspiring. Awesome. Love to see it. Or Jordan, go ahead. You unmuted. Oh, I was just going to say um, one other thing that um, I think a few clubs do, but I remember the fly one most clearly is um, AMAs Ask Me Anything, um, where they kind of do a panel where, you know, it's a kind of an open dialogue. You don't necessarily know where it's going to go or what's going to come up. And kind of everyone just agrees to be in that space and be honest with each other. And um, I went to a virtual AMA my first year for Fly. And um, it's so hard to be like authentic over Zoom. And I still like really remember the presence that everyone had. And I also remember that I looked to see who was at that panel as like the people who I thought maybe would also be interested in talking about socioeconomic diversity about what it means to kind of be in this space um, and feel different or feel like you don't belong. And um, I made some friends just by like texting people on WhatsApp and being like, you don't know me, but you asked a really great question on the panel. Do you think maybe we could hang out sometime or things like that? And um, that really helped me. So, yeah. Awesome. Love to hear it. Uh, we have a few minutes until we open up for Q&A, and I see there's a ton of awesome questions you guys are all asking. Please keep doing so. We're going to get to as many as we can for the, uh, until the end of the hour. And maybe an interesting last couple of questions, and this is maybe more selfish because I still have a year left of the program, and I'm sure uh, the folks uh, on the call will get some value from this too, which is there's so many things to do while you're at Sloan. I think Amber mentioned that you have to pick and choose uh, different retreats you're going on or different activity, activity that you can be a part of. And this can range from classes. Someone mentioned G Lab earlier. There's a lot of action learning labs. 
there are clubs that you could be a part of. There's retreats and trips that you can go everywhere. There's like small, uh, there's more personal things like the yarn, which is the storytelling uh, monthly thing that we do. So I guess looking back now that you're a year out for the folks that have graduated, what are, or I guess Amber as well, <laughs> now you graduated too. Um, what are some of the things that you look back fondly on? Like what are some of those core memories that you've built that you think are gonna last with you as you go out throughout your life? And it could be relationships, it could be anything. Fun to reminisce. Um, I think I can start. Um, I got really lucky with an awesome core team. So in your first year of your MBA program, um, you're put into a core team. So in at Sloan, it's for one semester, it's with it's with about six or seven people. And it's essentially folks within your co within your larger cohort that you do a lot of your assignments, group projects with, and you're kind of growing and learning with them and adjusting to MBA life together. Um, you know, in full transparency, I would say not everybody has a similar experience. You know, you, you're going to hear a mixture of views from a variety from whoever you talk to, but for me, it really was my core team that was like fantastic. And I think for me, again, like I said, having come in from the nonprofit sector, um, it it did feel like really jarring to be in this new space with people um, from different backgrounds that I hadn't had the opportunity to work with. And I was really transparent about kind of my my hesitations, kind of some fears that I had with my core team very early on. Um, I'm the kind of person who likes to lead with vulnerability. And so I was like, listen, y'all, I'm really scared that I'm not going to be successful in these areas. I'm really nervous about these things. And my core team really stepped up and showed out for me. Like whenever I was having any issues, like they're, you know, they were the ones who were really there um, and checking in on me. Like I remember in one class that I was struggling with, one of my core teams who had worked in that space professionally, like sat with me always in class. And like anytime I had a question, was always willing to answer questions for me. And so for me, that's been one of the, the most amazing like experiences um, in terms of just having a level of support that I personally didn't receive in undergrad. Um, so that for me was really great. And then in terms of just things to get involved in, um, I've personally had a really great time um, with Senate. Like, you know, I called out Allegra earlier in terms of just being able to collaborate with her on different initiatives. Um, but also I was one of the co-presidents uh, of my class. And so being able to do that also was really a, an awesome opportunity to get to work with different folks, not just on the student level, but also on the administration level. And that for me, like I always referred, I refer to it as my personal in-semester internship um, because it was really being able to navigate different stakeholders, different individuals, and really a, an opportunity to get to know different people in my class in a way and in a capacity that I, I, I don't think I would have had the opportunity to do so earlier. Um, it wasn't in the plans. Like I didn't go into Sloan being like, I'm going to be one of the co-presidents like at all. That was not, it kind of just, I, I made my way that way. But um, I think for me, that was a leadership opportunity on campus that I'm really thankful that I, that I put myself out there for. Awesome. Love to hear it. And it's nice that the uh, the core team was so strong. I think those are the small things where you can see your friends succeed in random paths. Some, some of my core team members are like interning at McKinsey and that was one of their goals in the beginning to see them succeed and get the internship is really nice. And that makes you believe that you can do it too. Um, okay, so I think it's Q&A time. There's a lot of cool questions in the chat. Let us go through them and then see how many we can run through. Our goal is to get through as many as we can. Uh, so one interesting part is we've talked about uh, travel quite a bit. I know we said the FLA retreat, and then there's a lot of trips people go to like every every corner of the world during their MBA. So how do you think about financing uh, and budgeting for the trips? Like how do you pick and choose? How do you, especially from an FLA background where you where you're probably where you might be financially constrained? How do you uh, navigate that? I can start out. Um, I'll say this one, you definitely want to go on some trips. And the reason for that is because a lot of things are going to happen. Um, community is going to get built, networking for post loan, all of that. A lot of that happens on trips and you don't want to miss out on that. 
However, I do understand it comes at a cost, right? And so for me, I wasn't a big MBA traveler. And part of the reason for that was because I did a lot of traveling before the MBA. I visited like over 25 countries before I got to Sloan. And I was very religious with taking my vacation pre-Sloan. So I didn't come into Sloan with this need. It kind of shocked me with this obsession of travel, to be honest. However, there are ways to do so that are cost friendly. So for example, um, Amber and I were actually one of the two of the co-organizers for the Africa trip, which meant we got to go on the trip for free. Um, so there are ways. And then also Jordan and I went to Senegal with G Lab together. And so that meant, so for those who don't know, the Action Learning Labs, G Lab specifically, is a lab where you are working with a, country, a company in an emerging market. And in exchange, at the end of your semester, typically over J term, the company will pay to for you to be on the ground to do final presentations and so forth. So that was a, a Sloan trip that was funded that we didn't have to pay for out of pocket. So there are definitely ways I've definitely encouraged those of you that are going to be applying and those of you that get in to look into action learning labs. There's a bunch of them. Um, they're on the website, you know, and you can um, with G Lab, you get to rank um, the different places that you want to go to across the world. We had people in Mexico and in, in different countries in Africa. Um, they've gone to like every corner of the earth. And so you can do that during your experience. Um, but I, I will say there are going to be some trips that you might want to go to that are not um, covered by, you know, by Sloan. And I'd say you'd have to, you know, use your judgment into which trips are worth it, um, which trips, you know, maybe it's a trip that's happening this year. But if you go next year, you can be an organizer on it and then you won't have to pay as much. You might just have to pay for your flight. Um, and then there's also ways of tapping into other resources. So when. Um, when we were planning Africa Trek, we realized there were several students who never got to leave the country during their MBA experience. And so we worked with some folks um, at, at MIT and funded uh, scholarships to send about seven or eight people to Morocco on the trip. So there are ways, I definitely say, even if you can't afford the trip, look out for your classmates that perhaps they've never gone on any trip before. Uh, they don't, maybe they don't even have a passport. Um, and so there are ways to work with the institution to get things like that done. Yeah. And on that end, I'll also add that remember that you yourself are a leader. So um, one thing that we did for FLY was when we planned the, the retreat, we asked folks, how much money are you willing to spend on this trip? And we took the lower bound of that. And that's what we used. And so it, it was really good to hear actually during this panel, Amber, that you still remember the retreat, that it was a, a really good experience for you because it just goes to show you don't have to do the, the fanciest, coolest things, right? When you plan a trip, um, in addition to, to everything that Allegra said in terms of making it cost effective, you can also just think about where your, your fellow classmates are and meet them there. Yeah, one of my um, favorite memories from Sloan is a trip that um, Vanessa and I were on um, during spring break last year. We did a civil rights road trip and we drove through the South um, and visited a lot of different historical sites um, and kind of learned more about what the civil rights movement uh, consisted of, some of the history there, and also a lot of the ways that, you know, uh, institutional racism is still alive today. And, um, you know, that trip was partially covered by Sloan, partially came out of my own pocket. It was also a lot less expensive than some of the other like big treks that people were going on. And I think it was still an incredibly meaningful experience. And I think one of the places where I learned and connected with other students a lot. And so I think it's a little bit about trade-offs. There's always going to be more to do than you can. You're going to be constrained by time, by money, by wanting to sleep. Um, I think it's about just asking yourself, like, who are the people that I want to get to know better? What are the experiences that I want to have that will mean something to me? And sometimes that will be worth spending the money. And sometimes you'll find that there's actually something pretty inexpensive uh, that can get you that same uh, feeling of, of enrichment. Yeah, nothing super more to add other than I mean, I, I had to take out loans to participate in um, several of these trips that I was more interested in. And I think to what everybody else has said, 
um, there is like your intention. It's just about you being intentional about where you want to put your funds, right? That was a choice that felt right for me um, to just take out more money to be able to participate in certain um, certain activities. And I don't regret it at all. Um, I mean, I am still on my grad school journey. So I have one more year. Um, but it, it was definitely something that I think for me was was important. Similar to, similarly to Allegra, like I, I had been very intentional about my own travel plans prior to graduate school. Um, and so again, it was just about that same level of intentionality when I was choosing trips that were being offered uh, during during my time at school. I love it. Uh, and I very rarely hear people say, man, I wish I didn't go on this awesome trip with all these amazing people somewhere, <laughs> somewhere cool. So I think it, I, I agree that being deliberate and intentional is very important. Um, okay, one of the questions that's being asked quite a bit, which is how, uh, are there any challenging experiences that you've had during your time at Sloan, uh, given your, your first gen, your FLI background? Uh, and if you had any challenging experiences that come to mind, how did you navigate that? And were there relationships that you leaned on or resources at school that you leaned on? Or how did you get through that? And it could be anything from financial to like, imposter syndrome to, uh, to new, new internships or new careers, it could be whatever. Um, I can take a stab at this. Um, I'll say this. What I'm going to say is not really something that is particular to Sloan because having had a life before Sloan and now a life after Sloan, you'll see this in any area of life. I think a challenge that, and Vanessa kind of touched on this earlier, but a challenge that some fly Sloanies might have is that they're, they are a minority in this very prestigious community of people who perhaps the majority of the class is there, they don't come from a fly background. So your interests, your concerns, your post MBA plans of how much risk you're willing to take, those things are different. And so having a class that understands that um, can be challenging. Um, I think for me, and this is something that I definitely think um, needs to be promoted in the business school ecosystem overall is that the for me the lesson of the most underrated lesson of the MBA experience is leadership and so you rarely will see people on the cover of the Wall Street Journal because they failed the pricing class or because they didn't understand accounting it's more so because of a leadership issue and so I think the MBA experience is a very safe space to learn those leadership skills um, my year Sloan had like leadership class requirements. Um, and I didn't even realize that was a thing because I was just naturally involved in some leadership activities. But I will say one way to help with some of the challenges is to get involved in leadership opportunities and to learn those valuable lessons during in, in the safety, so to speak, of a MBA program. But they're, they're not really lessons that you want to learn of how to lead, how to work with people from different backgrounds. You don't want to learn that five years out, perhaps when you're married with kids and your job is at risk. Um, so I'd say take the MBA, the time during the MBA experience to learn those lessons. Um, I have a unique one, well, maybe, maybe unique one. Um, so as a fly student, I mentioned I moved from California to Boston, um, and that was my first time living on the East Coast. I also moved with my fiance, and um, we were like moving and living together for the first time and navigating our relationship, like where, like, you know, in my home, like my, my mom was a stay-at-home parent, my dad worked full time kind of all, all of my life uh, or most of my life and um, learning as a fly student how to navigate my relationship and MBA and those transitions I think for me was really challenging and it wasn't something I could necessarily like my mom and I could relate on because um, she's my like she's my go-to for everything she's my best friend and this was something new new for us and I think I really leaned on other colleagues, like classmates who had also moved with partners were also similarly going through um, situations like this. Actually two of my really good friends who are also part of, who were also part of Fly 
um, who came married, we had similar situations that during our orientation, like first week of like a bunch of events, everybody thought our partners were the MBA students and that we were their significant others. And so they're like, oh, who's your significant, um, like, oh, who's, which one, of, which, who's your partner that's in the MBA program? It's like, oh, I'm in the MBA program. My partner is my, he's my plus one. And so I think that was also something great to have, like, folks that were able to, like, relate and resonate with that, which wasn't something that I expected. I think I was ready, I was ready for the academic challenges and the transition challenges and managing my relationship in this transition was something that was unexpected for me which I was able to lean and find other classmates who were also going through it as well, which was really helpful. Yeah, I, I feel like the audience is hearing a theme of Sloney's helping Sloney's and being there for each other. And I'm glad that it's resonating so deeply. Um, so one of the interesting questions I've been asked a couple of times is about risk tolerances and how that's changing throughout the Sloan experience. Maybe as you're learning new things about how the world works or about different career opportunities that are out there, um, how has your risk appetite changed? Uh, perhaps, I guess, Allegra, if you want to talk about your co-founding something, I feel like that's <laughs> a pretty risky endeavor to begin with. Yeah, I'd say I'll do the caveat by saying I'm not risk averse at all, really, I've realized through my career. Um, and so that helped to not be super risk averse. And just to give you background into that, I grew up low income, but I had no idea I was low income because my mom worked three jobs to send me to private school. And so when I look at the you know W-2s, I'm like, I can't believe that's how little you were making. And I didn't feel it necessarily. And so because of that, it has given me some sort of in like built in confidence to just go out and do what I want to do and take calculated risks. Um, so I, I remember when I was applying to Sloan, I told myself, I'm quitting my job, whether or not I get into the MBA. And I was 100% serious. So I'm very glad that I got in because I don't know what I would be doing if I did it. Um, so I have that like risk tolerance, so to speak. And Sloan definitely helped with that, just as seeing people who were raising millions of dollars of capital in their startups during my second year um, was definitely, it you know, showed that this is possible. Meeting people who did this after, who, you know, and then I mean, who co founded companies or during their MBA was the, the Martin Trust Center um, and all of the, like I took GSD, the advanced entrepreneurial class where you have to pick sorts of things or you had professors, literally your homework and their agenda was to help you build your business. Those sorts of opportunities definitely gave me the confidence that I needed to do this. I think what also helped is that my now co-founders, two of them, for two of the, it's four of us on the co-founding team and me feel like it I feel like she dropped off yeah okay sorry for the audience <laughs> I'm sure she'll be hopping back on um but that, that, that story is powerful the the feeling that the Martin Trust Center gives you that anything is possible and seeing your friends that are in your cohort and your section uh blossom and raise millions of dollars is kind of cool uh, and for what it's worth, when I started, I didn't know what I was going to be doing. And now I'm, I have a startup and we're closing a $3 million funding round. And what do I know about startups? <laughs> uh, like back when I started, I didn't know what a series A was. So it's fun. Like the like anything is possible. And it, it's nice to see your friends succeed as well. Uh, okay. So I think we're at the tail end of this. I can hand it back over to, to, to Donna to, to, to help wrap it up. Thank you so very, very much. I'm not sure you can see me. I want to thank all of you, Shiv, Allegra, Vanessa, Jordan, and Amber for taking the time to, this evening to join us, to share your stories, to be so honest and thoughtful. Um, I, I cannot thank you enough and I really appreciate each and every one of you. And I have no doubt that everybody else on this call feels very much the same way. To be honest, I could listen to you for another hour or so. Um, but we don't have the time. So um, I want to thank everybody else also for joining us. Um, 
my, my guess is, uh, you know, something that you heard this evening has resonated with you and you're hopefully now thinking about the application, which in fact has gone live. It went live last week. Um, I want to share with you application deadlines, which are on the next slide, um, just so everybody's aware of them. Uh, for the MBA, our first round, round one deadline is September 27th, and then round two is in January, round three is in April. I'll tell you this, if you're on this call right now and you're thinking of applying this year, round one or round two, don't even think about round three. Um, and then for LGO, this is really important for people who are interested in LGO, and Shiv is an amazing example of what an LGO student looks like in the LGO experience. We only are having one deadline this year one application deadline, which is November 8th. Um, anybody who might be an MBA early candidate, we're also going to one um, deadline as well, and that will be in, in April. So you have plenty of time to think about that. Um, in addition, there are many, many ways for you to continue to connect with us. We are actually, you know, our recruiting calendar is, is a complete hybrid with virtual events like this, but also, in-person events. Next week alone, we will be in Washington, D.C., New York, and Boston for Sloan on the Road events. So please check those out and register um, if you happen to be in any of those areas. Um, and in addition, we are going to continue to have virtual sessions once the fall begins and classes actually um, get started up. We will have our class visit program. And so you're more than welcome to come to campus, sit in on a class, have lunch with current students, and spend a little bit of time with an admissions advisor. Um, you know, stay tuned for that. That should be on the website in a little bit. And then finally, as I mentioned, and let's look at the next slide, this is the first of a series of um, similar panel conversations. Next week, I will again be moderating, you know, welcoming you to a session um, with women alums. We also have one coming up with Hispanic and Latinx alums, the LGBTQ plus community. The veterans one is actually in the process of being rescheduled. So keep an eye out on the website. Uh, we'll have Black and African American alums, Asian American alums, and then we're adding a partner and family panel as well. We have many Sloan students um, you know, like Amber, who come with family members, whether it be a significant other, a spouse, a spouse of children, just children. Um, and that in itself, you know, is, you know, a unique experience. And therefore, we thought this year would be interesting to hear from a panel of um, people who have come with partners so they can share their experience as well. And so all of these events will be virtual. They will all begin at 7 p.m. Eastern time. They will actually all be recorded. Yes, this one has been recorded. So if you have friends who weren't able to come tonight, please let them know. We're going to post this on our website very shortly. Um, and with that, you know, if you want to learn more about the Fly Club itself, here's some information. Um, and you can reach out personally to Shiv. I'm sure you'll have no problem finding him. Um, and with that, I want to thank our panelists again, and I want to thank each and one, every one of you. I want to thank my colleague, um, Catherine, who's been in the background changing the slides. You can do one more change for me um, because I want everybody to see ways to stay connected. We actually have a website um, and an email address, admissions.mitsloan.mit.edu. We have dedicated people answering questions. And so if you have any questions and you want to send us an email, please don't hesitate to do so. I hope to see you at another event like this or one of our other many events. And I look forward to receiving each and every one of your applications. Thank you all very, very much um, and stay safe.